Began to not take God so seriously any longer. We made decisions that we would never make years ago. And go, ahead, go ahead and turn your Bible to Colossians 3. Or start preaching and then start the service, right? Not for now, but for Christ. above all things it wasn't just a temporary thing like how we say it wasn't a temporary high this was the dedication this was the answer that's supposed to last a lifetime Colossians 3 verse 1 it says if then you were raised with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. See, when we are seeking something, it's because we desire it. We want it. We want a piece of that. When we desire something, we're chasing after it. It doesn't matter what gets in our way. It doesn't matter what's trying to hinder us. We want that, and that's just it. And we're willing to do whatever it takes to get to that point. But it's not for the gains, but it's for the purpose of knowing who Christ is and knowing his heart. If you desire change in your life, we have to stop looking at the things that are surrounding us, the things that are impacting our lives, and begin to look at the Creator. We have to begin to look at the purpose of why we are alive today. Why did you get past that surgery when death should have been brought upon you? When we knew that we couldn't make it out of surgery, when we knew we couldn't make it out of a circumstance, when we knew that our life was on a line and our life was not taken, and yet we had another chance to give. Are we looking at the things above? Because where we are at today is by the grace of God, because we are allowed to be here today, being able to sit in church today, to be able to take in his word that brings in life. It's a time and place that we have to take into realization that we have to begin to take the word of God more serious now than ever. We have to begin to turn back to our roots and realize we are nothing without God. Because sometimes when we start feeling good about ourselves, we make it about ourselves. But God has made you that man. God has made you that woman today. Psalms 26 says, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy hand with the saving strength of his right hand. And I say this and I read it this morning because a lot of us need to this that I now that I know that the Lord saves his anointed who needs saving today I need some saving 
I need some deliverance. I need someone to be on my side. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer them from his holy heaven. That means from where he sits upon, he will answer your prayer. He will answer your call. He will answer what he feels free and it's the time to answer. Because sometimes the answer isn't right on our times, right? Man, we look at our clocks and we're like, oh man, Lord, it's been a, it's been a week now. And I remember I was fasting hard for three days and, and I'm waiting for the answer, Lord. You know how much food I gave up during that time? You know how, mu how much, how much uh, soda I gave up during that time? Huh? Do you know, do you know that, Lord? We get to that point. And we think that we sacrificed more than what he did. We demand something from him when he should, and when he's not even demanding nothing from us. All he requires is just obedience. How hard is it to be obedient to the voice of Christ? How hard is it to be obedient to that? If he's, the one, if he's telling you to do something in your life, that means do it. Why hesitate? Why do we prolong the things of God in our lives? Why do we hold off on the purposes that he's given us for our lives? Why do we question God over and over and over again to send somebody to speak to me when God's already sent you 20 people to speak to you and you still are refusing to believe that it's God? There's people that have pushed your buttons that have said the right things and you still don't listen. You still don't listen. And as long as we push away the purposes of God off our lives and put, it, put in the excuses, all we're doing is doing harm for ourselves. Because if we don't listen to the people that are trying to speak to us, and trying to bring in correction and trying to bring in uh, your, 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 your uh, how would you say? What was I talking about? What was that? Understanding? Someone gives you a word, you're praying for that word, someone comes and tells you that, and you keep pushing it away. God keeps telling you and telling you, you need to get to this point, you need to get to this point of surrender and to worship me, and you keep pushing that away. Why do you think things happen in your life? Why do you think trials happen in your life? Why do you think you go through circumstances in your life? He can't get a hold of you peacefully. <laughs> oh, you don't want to listen to me. I sent so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. I spoke to you in your sleep this night, this night, this night. Okay, well, you know what? This little trial I am going to let go and let you deal with on your own since you're doing things on your own in the first place because you're going according to your understanding. I'm going to allow this thing to take place in your life and then maybe then you will seek and trust me then. Why do we think so many things happen in our lives? The devil's attack, attack me, the devil's on me. Well, that could be so. But are you being obedient to what God is calling you to do? He'll use the devil as a puppet. Yeah. He'll use the enemy as the puppet to get you into your place. Because sometimes we need that fire under us, and that's what he brings is a fire. That's all he brings. He ain't got no lightning. He ain't got no thunder. See where it says right here, with the saving strength of his right hand, God's right hand symbolizes strength and salvation. Strength and salvation, the most powerful things that you will ever hear throughout the Bible. Strength, where we draw our strength from salvation, which cannot be taken away from us as long as we continue to believe. Salvation, that was a gift that gives us the opportunity to make heaven our home. If we are looking anywhere else, if we are searching somewhere else, you will not find what you are looking for unless it's in the world. If you're not seeking Jesus, then you're seeking something else. You can't point the finger at Jesus and say, you allowed me to get to this point. No, we allow ourselves because we don't want to seek correction. We don't want to seek God's advice because God's advice will tell you you're wrong. You're going the wrong direction. Head back south. You're going the wrong way. So we stop seeking God and we start seeking our friends. 
The ones that have a relationship with God. But they're never in church. <laughs> Bible says don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. I was at church at home. I, I watched you online. And? What are you doing for the kingdom? It's like the whole COVID thing started an evolution of couch warriors. I'll praise God on my sofa. I'll praise God on my lazy boy as I'm eating my, my overcooked eggs and bacon and sausage. I would send a heart, I would send a thumbs up, I would send this to show my participation. Your participation needs to be in the church. Amongst your brothers and sisters. See, this is where you get your spiritual refreshing at. It's not only in the preaching, it's not only in the word, but you're able to see eye to eye. You're able to have contact with somebody. You're able to share with somebody as iron sharpens iron. This is where you receive it at, is in the body of Christ, is in the churches today. Verse 2, it says, set your mind on things above, not on the things of earth, not on the things of this earth. Why? Because there's nothing good for you here. There's nothing good for you here. God set things on this earth for us to enjoy, yes, but not for, our, not for our sinful pleasures, not for the things that will draw us away from him. But God has given us things while we are on this earth that are healthy and good for us to enjoy. Because he gives us things to be able to enjoy life, to be able to go out and, and spend time with family and friends. He gives us all these things. But we must decide to keep our eyes on God. It's a decision that is made. A decision means that means from this point going forward, I have decided. Now, I am inquiring of it. If you're inquiring, that means you're just going back and forth. I don't want to be an inquirer. I don't want to be a wanderer. I want to be one that makes a decision and that stands firm on that decision to, to decide to keep my eyes on God, but not just with my words, but with my all. That means no matter what it is that I'm facing today, no matter what it is that I'm facing this past month or past years, that I have decided to follow Jesus no matter what. Even though it may seem like I'm failing at times, I still have decided to follow Jesus no matter what. Even though I feel like I'm being broken in half, even though I, I feel the enemy saying that you're failing, that you're not making it, I still decide to follow Jesus no matter what. Because I'm not based, I'm not built to go on feelings or emotions. I'm built to go according to what the Spirit says and the Spirit within me is saying, keep fighting, keep pushing, keep going forward. You're not doing it just for you, you're doing it for other people, see? You're not doing it just for yourself, you're doing it for your family. You're doing it for those that you're praying for, you're doing it for those that you have been fasting for. It's through your prayers that God's gonna send someone else to go talk to that person that won't give the day or night for you. That's the way God works. If God can't get to a hard-headed person, he'll send another hard-headed person. That's saved. That's saved. And that will stick the word to them. And if that don't work, oh, hey, God has plenty of people on the, on the line. That one didn't work. Good job. Well done, faithful servant. Go back. I'm going to send this one over here. This one's going to hurt. But they need some hurt in their life to get some understanding through that thick skull of theirs. Because sometimes we get thick. No, nope, don't want to hear God. No, nope, don't want to hear God. Oh, Dad, quit telling me that. That's just you. Oh, Mom, quit telling me that. That's just you. <sighs> Always quoting scriptures at me. We get offensive. Hello, have you tried praying on it? Lord, is this really you? Am I getting angry at the wrong people? We get angry at the wrong people because they tell us the truth. Oh, excuse me, isn't that the thing that you asked for? I need truth in my life. I need to be built up. I need to be strengthened. Okay, well, here's the truth. I can't believe you told me that. 
story to the Bible also says this, and Jesus also says this, and this also says, so keep on running, but you're not running from me. You're running from the Lord. You ain't running from me. There's plenty more like me out there, and you're going to run to them again and again and again because God has your number. He's tired of seeing you struggle with that. So he's going to send someone else. You run somewhere. He's going to send someone else over there. Second Timothy 2, verse 11, says this is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. That means when we gave up ourselves and we just lay down all the things that we desire, that we always wanted, whatnot, we begin to say, Lord, it's your will, not mine any longer. I would rather go with you and whatever you want for my life. We begin to live for him and live with him. And that means everything that he has for us, we're able to accept it and acknowledging that it did come from Christ, that it did come from God. See, if we're not living with him and we get blessed, we don't actually thank God for it. Because we're not seeing that it actually comes from him. But when we're living with him, we be, begin to receive some great and mighty things from him. Whether it's a blessing or a movement or a family member getting saved or whatever the case may be, we acknowledge him in it. And then it strengthens us. And then it strengthen, strengthens our faith. It strengthens our trust in him. But to die is to gain. This flesh... It always, how would you say, disappoints me. This flesh always disappoints me. I wake up one day, my, I, my eyes are like this. I can't do nothing about it, okay? I go to work like that. I wake up another day, I step out of bed wrong, and now my whole back is out. <laughs> Another day, I step out of bed, now I'm stretching, now I pop my back and I can't move. This flesh will somehow, some way, will always fail me or disappoint me. But as long as I don't keep my mind on this fleshly things, and I keep my mind on the things that are above, everything will be okay. Because it shouldn't affect who I am in Christ. It shouldn't affect who I am and who God created me to be. This is only just a temporary thing and it'll fix itself somehow, some way. We can't go on our lives saying, today I will die with you, Lord, and the next. Lord, I have plans, so I live myself. An emotional believer. Die one day, got touched. We get touched in service, and it's like, man, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to. I'm crying at the altar. I'm down on my knees. I'm uplifted hands. I, I surrender myself to you. I'll do everything that you want me to. Why? Because God spoke to you. God touched you. God was doing all these things, and, and all of a sudden, you feel that thing of surrender. And then all of a sudden, something happens the next day. All of a sudden, that surrender is gone. We forgot what God was speaking to us. We forgot what he was putting on our heart, and that's vanished. We need some consistency in our lives. We need some fire in our lives. We need to remember day by day by day that the spirit that's within us refreshes our minds and refreshes our hearts on the reason why we surrendered our lives to Jesus. We need constant reminders. I mean, we can also just kind of like, you know, set our alarms as we wake up in the morning and have it say, remember why we surrendered to Jesus. I mean, it might be easier for some of us. Oh, this alarm is off again. Uh, I got to get my coffee. Remember, I surrendered my life to Jesus. I'm enjoying my coffee today. I got to remember this. Sometimes we need a small reminder. We need that reminder. Somebody can re even remind us and it's like, you know what? That's right. This is, this is what I live for. I needed that reminder. Because sometimes we forget, and it's the voice that reminds us, like, I'm here because of you allowed me to be here. I am who I am because you allowed me to be who I am. You created me, and you made me specifically for a purpose, and Lord, help me to figure out what that purpose is. Because sometimes when we hide from our purpose or we run away from it, 
You won't find peace. You won't find peace. Lord, how come I won't find peace? Well, fulfill your purpose. Some of us have purpose and we're just asking God like, non-verbally, I'm not ready for it. I don't want to do it yet. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Well, God gives you understanding through doing it. Six, five years ago, I didn't know how to pastor. Do I still know how? I I've I've put God first before all things. Do I, know, do I know how to do everything? Nope. Do I focus on that? Nope, not at all. Why? Because I trust in God. I trust in His ways. And if He tells me to do something, I'm going to do it, whether it's no matter what it may sound like. Why? Because I trust in Him. My faith has been built on Him. Me and Him have been through a lot together. He has proven Himself so faithful to me that it, I can't fathom the thought of turning my back on Him. You talk about a down G? That's a down God. To the most depressing times, to the, to the most loneliest times, to the most critical times in my life. He has never left me alone. Many times I've been felt like I was left alone, but he was right there right beside me. Stopped me from making bad decisions in my life. It wasn't your self-will. <laughs> It wasn't you because you're strong. That was God's mercy on you, trying to convince you not to do something. <laughs> Where has our conviction gone? Where has our conviction gone? How many times have we told the Holy Spirit to stop bugging us? Leave me alone, I'm trying to go to sleep. Leave me alone, I'm trying to enjoy my day. So we can enjoy ourselves without the conviction. We can go to the beach and all of a sudden God is just on you. Like, man, Lord, I'm at the beach, you know. Why why you wanna tell me stuff when I'm at the beach trying to relax? You know why he 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 gets a hold of you at certain times? Because there's nothing around to distract you. And it's in that peace that you have that you were given, is when he's only able to be able to speak to you. Because the voices are not there. The people are not around. There's nothing there to distract you. So you're able to hear on what the Spirit is trying to speak to you. Verse 3, For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ Jesus. You died, you gave up the old life. That's, it's, it's simple. What is the old life? The old things that you had to step away from that had kept you in bondage. The old ways, the old mentality, this is part of what it takes to die to ourselves. It's not a decision, it's not, a, a, it's not something that we do day by day, it's something that we make a choice on to do every day. How do I feel like today? How do I feel like tomorrow? We shouldn't allow our circumstances to change the way that we serve God. God can change the circumstance. But we have to give Him opportunity to do this. Ephesians 3, 18 through 19 says, May be able to comprehend all the saints, with all the saints, what is the width, the length, and depth, and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Today, can we comprehend the love of Christ? Can we comprehend the love of Christ? Can we understand it? then why is it so hard for us to pray at times? Why is it so hard to allow God to change us at times? If we can comprehend the love of God, if we understand what He's delivered us from, what He's done in our lives, if we can comprehend them, then why is it so hard to pray at times? Why is it so hard to go to church? Why is it so hard to forgive? Why is it hard, so hard to love one another? Isn't it biblical? Well, you can acknowledge the love of Christ, but you're struggling with all these things. Help me to understand. What kind of love are you seeing? 
What kind of love is Jesus preaching? So we got to examine ourselves. We got to examine our hearts. What kind of love am I pro portraying today? Is it Jesus or myself, or is it 50 50? Because Jesus sent me to tell you something. But that spiritual side is running thin, and now this fleshly side is running to tell you, man, just listen. Have you ever been there before? Yeah, you don't have to raise your hand. Sometimes we get spiritually frustrated. People don't want to listen sometimes. They just want to be in that, in that place. They want to be stuck in that place because they're comfortable. We get comfortable in that. But when we get told that, we also get stubborn in that. I'm not comfortable. I'm going through something. Well, I'm not going through something. Are you still comprehending the love of Christ? When you're getting broken, are you still comprehending the love of Christ? When you're, make, when you're waking up all grumpy and angry, are you comprehending the love of Christ? Because once we begin to understand this, then our demeanor, our actions are, are, are all in all begin to change towards everything, every situation. Verse 4 says, when Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with him in, in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication and cleanliness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. See, the day that Christ comes back and, and, and gets us, people will realize their error in not believing. And they will realize, you know, that the whole thing that you're saying about this God is actually real. He actually is real. The day that Jesus comes back for his people and they begin to see him come down from the heavens, they're going to be like, uh-oh, I made a mistake. They're going to remember you during that time. I should have listened to that crazy man. I should have listened to that crazy woman telling me about God and the forgiveness of sins. I didn't know there was such a thing as a God that could forgive me for all my trespasses. All my trespasses. I didn't know there was a such thing until I gave him opportunity. And then I was made alive, understanding that I could be forgiven for all things. Because there was a submission. People will realize that their error and not believing, not only that, but what they always thought about you, what they always said about you, what they always try to make fun of you about, what they said behind your back, will quickly make sense on how they were the way they were to you during those times because people don't know why they talk about you. People don't know why they talk about you. I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't, why do we talk about people? What, what's the, is it self-gratification? Is it to show that we're important? Is it to show that we have something on somebody? Well, doesn't God have a lot more on you than you have on them? What ha when has it become something satisfactory to where we have to start talking about others? There's no satisfaction in that. Because when you start running out of the gossip, then you start running to other things that are no good for you. We go from one thing to another. The one day when Christ comes back, everyone that had something to say about you will begin to see what's uh, taking place at that point in time. And they're going to realize this is the reason why they felt a certain way towards you. Because some people won't be able to stand you because of he who resides in you. People won't be able to stand looking at you, smiling with that little smirk like, because there's something that you have that they don't understand, that they want for themselves. But when you try to give it to them, they reject it. It's that day when they see that taking place. They're going to recognize their error. And I should have listened. I should have accepted. Do we truly understand that one day he's going to come back for us? He's going to come back for us? Christ is going to come back and receive his bride? How many of us are ready? How many of us are ready? Hey, we got to be ready. We got to be ready. We got to be there. 
you have a choice. We have a choice. I have a choice. Every day I have to be ready. Every day I have to make a decision. Every day I have to forget about myself and my things. Every day I have to look at the things that are above and say, Lord, what is it that you want from me today? Because all these things are just holding me down. Isn't it so easy to look at all the things holding us down and say, my, oh my. All these things that are just holding me down and all of a sudden, boom, there goes a chain. Oh, that thing's holding me down again. Oh, man, all these things. And you put yourself in that place of suffocation. You put yourself in that place of persecution because you focus on those things. But let me say this, though. There are some things that you need to look at and you need to deal with. Okay. Ignorance is not something that we should be doing. If it's causing you to stumble, God, deal with this. If this is causing you to stumble, God, deal with that. Quit looking at it. Quit looking at it as if it's going to come back and get you again. If God said it's dealt with, it's dealt with. Oh, I feel it creeping up again. Get that mentality out. God's delivered you from that, from that, from that. But yet, it's still right here in your cabeza. It's in your head. You Got to get it out. Get a Q-tip. <laughs> it's going to be painful, yeah. Get that, get that sucker out. We got to learn on how to allow God to get these things truly out of our systems. We've got to learn on how to allow God just to penetrate our, our hearts and our very souls. We comprehend the love of Christ, don't we? Then we know that when we ask God to come in and begin to do a work, that whatever takes place, it's for the best of us. We comprehend the love of Christ. So whatever he has to do, whatever I'm going to feel, it's going to be for the benefit of me. So that it can benefit him. 6 through 7 it says, Because of these things the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of the disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. When the things you have once walked when you lived all past tense. That means you're not doing it any longer. It's no longer a part of your life. It says that his wrath It means in Greek, standing, it stands for referring to divine judgment to be inflicted upon the wicked. Come on now. We, we, we talk about salvation, we talk about deliverance, we talk about all these things, but yet you don't hear a church talking about hell and judgment. But sometimes, once in a while, it needs to be said. It needs to be a reminder. Now, I don't want to be a church that says, oh, if, if you don't, you're repenting this now, you're going to go to hell, gnashing the teeth, and have it be an everyday sermon. But what you need in your lives is the Holy Spirit to be able to intercede for you and show you your consequences if you decide to keep going further down this path that you have chosen for yourself. Now, when there comes a time of separation, meaning... Christ comes back and tribulation takes place and now it's, it's us. No Holy Spirit. Guess what? Now you're living for yourself. Now you're really living for yourself. Now you're really suffering. Now you're really having to figure it out for yourself. You're not going to have the Holy Spirit. How many of you knew that? Once, the, once Jesus takes back those chosen, guess what? Those that are here, if you don't have no conviction now, then you should be okay. If you have no conviction, no, you'll be okay after that happens because nothing's going to change for you. But everyone else that was going to church, everyone else that was trying to serve God to the best ability, everyone else that wasn't just taken up at that first time, that's going to be where the fight, the struggle's at. I would rather go through what I'm going through today and be able to be taken up. And knowing that no matter what it took in my life, that no matter how much it hurt in life, 
that I was putting God first above all things. To me, and to some, it may be considered suffering, but it's actually a lifesaver. It's a lifesaver. We don't know if it's going to distract us from doing something else that we shouldn't be doing. We have plans to do something else, and something else comes up, and all of a sudden, we get disappointed. Well, God's probably trying to stop you from doing that one thing. Don't get mad at the person. Verse 8 through 9, it says, But now you yourselves are to put off these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with these deeds. Do not lie to one another. Do not lie. Since you have put off these old deeds, you have put off the old man. Quit trying to live both sides. We got to understand that if we try to live both sides, that's why you struggle so much. Because you're still trying to play both parts. See, when we give it all to God, the struggle isn't as bad as we think it is. But when we try to do both parts, the struggle is real. You are going to go through it. You are going to struggle. You are going to be an emotional roller coaster, should I say. What are the things that we're practicing today? What are our actions consist of today, this past week, the past year? See, we're no longer to practice these things any longer. They should be the things that we choose to stop because we're no longer the same. We're no longer the same. The one thing about us as people is that we can become creatures of habit. We could become creatures of habit. We say we don't gossip anymore, but we pick up the other bad habits. I don't do this anymore. Yeah, but you do all these things. We pick up other bad habit that still puts a bad taste of church for others watching you as they are wanting to go. We put a bad, we, we ourselves as the body in the churches today, we put a bad taste in other people's mouths because of who we are and the way that we act. I don't want to go to that church. I'm trying to stop doing that. But they're encouraging me to do this. I don't want to go there. I want to be an on-fire Christian. And, and that's not what I'm searching for. I don't want that because they still pardon. They still do all these things and like, as, as if they never stopped doing it. And I'm tired of that life. I think, I believe that the churches turn away more people than what the world does. It, it's, it's saddening. It's, it's saddening. And this is something that I, I've been feeling in my spirit for weeks now. We turn people away from God because of who we and how, because of how we represent Him at times. Well, I had a bad day. Don't we all have bad days? I didn't have my coffee. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't know how some of you can get if you don't have your coffee. Close to backsliding, huh? Crazy people, man. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. This and that. Yeah, but you're turning people away. You're turning souls away that are wanting something. That's better for them. I love this person or that person. Then you hate them because you think that they're talking about you. So in return, you start being the same person. You ever wake up in an off day and you look at somebody and they smile at you and all of a sudden you start thinking they're talking about you? You're not that important. <laughs> You're not that important. If they're talking about you, let them. People make up so much stuff nowadays just to gain popularity. Where has our heart gone, church? 
where has our motives gone? Where has the, the understanding, our comprehension of who Christ is in us gone? We're called to be separated from the world, not to be part of it. Not to be part-timers either. You get to enjoy life serving God, you know that, right? There's a lot of things you can do. Like me and Zodiac. We're horseshoe champions. Ain't no one can beat us. We went to the retreat. It was fixed. It was fixed. I forgot who won. Pastor Daniel and someone else won. That was fixed. They got the wrong down. And I was supposed to be winning that, th that tournament. We got bowling champions here. We got people that like to play golf. Well, yeah, not really golf. Okay. We like to go camp. We would like to do all those things. You can find all that same fun inside a church. But sometimes we don't get to know the church. We get to know one person or two people, and all of a sudden we just turn around and jump ship. But the reason we go to church isn't about the people, isn't it? Isn't it about God? Isn't it about your salvation? Why are you making it about the people? The people made me do, well, sorry, well, since you made that choice. What will our excuses be when we be taken up? What will we say before the Lord in front of heaven's gates? Verse 10. And this goes on, and then we act certain ways, and we do certain things, and yet our conviction isn't there. Our conviction's gone. That, that, that spirit, that voice that tells you that's wrong is no longer there because you ignored it for so long. In verse 10 it says, and have you not put on, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. who is renewed. The Greek word is enananu, enananu, enananu. And that's the Greek word, which means, refers to the process of becoming new, which is ongoing for believer. That means it keeps going and it don't stop. It's ongoing. It doesn't pause. It doesn't take a break. It doesn't say, all right, let's time to uh, uh, whatever. It keeps going. It's an ongoing thing that transpires, that takes place in your life. That means that you will begin to, to reflect and understand the knowledge of him that created you, and you'll begin to understand the one who created you. In Romans 13, 14, it says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Why? Because we shouldn't be looking at what's behind us, but what is ahead of us. Renewed knowledge means the acknowledgement of knowing him. That means once you know him, it's not worth looking back. It's not worth doing anything else. We hear the voice is saying, look back, look back. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's so tempting at times. Remember this, remember that. God, God's taking us along the way. Remember this. And you hear those voices and tell you, look back. Look at these things. Look at those things. And, you, and there's a time when you fight. And you're like, no, 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 keep going forward. And you keep going forward and you feel good. But there's times that I know in our Christian lives that some of us sometimes... Do you still have an interest in things that you shouldn't have an interest in? Then surrender it to Jesus. 11 and closing, it says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. The differences of who we are in race and gender and age or anything else does not apply to those that are in Christ. 
It does not apply to those that are in Christ. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male or nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You are all created equal. You are all created the same. So why talk about that person? Why say something about that person? Are they not your brother? Are they not your sister? What makes you better than them if you don't know how to do this? Come on now. Where is your conviction at? I have a relationship with the Lord. Then show it. Because all you're doing is just rambling on and on and on and you're trying to make people look bad, but you're making yourself look bad. Don't give in to that stuff. Don't give it. Where's the scripture at? Do I need to read it again? Man. I don't know what I... I'm going to read the scripture one more time for you. Psalms 26. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Are you anointed? Are you anointed? Are you anointed? Yes. Okay. Then he's going to save you. Doesn't matter what it's from, he's gonna save you. He will answer them from his holy heaven with his saving strength from his right hand. He's gonna save you from that that's coming against you. From whatever it is, great or small, it doesn't matter. He's gonna save you from that. You gotta believe it. Trust in him. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for this time.